Ciao. A man with perfect recall of what it's like to be growing up in your teens. The talented... No, you've done um, uh, We Love Stuff once. Yes. Once, okay. Once, yes. We're doing it again. Excellent. Brian Chaffin, everybody. Brian Chaffin finishing up the week with us. Uh, Brian Chaffin, mm. of course, uh, editor-in-chief mm. of the Mac Observer. Do not call him mm-hmm. managing editor. Mm-hmm. He manages He manages nothing. <laughs> that's that's cheap. So true. Um, that's uh, sorry about that. Hey, uh, so it, it is a game that has uh, swept the small parts of the nation that listen to this show every Friday. Uh, it is, of course, Wheel of Stuff. I bought a Decision Maker app. I put things on the Decision Maker app. Mm-hmm. I then uh, spin the wheel and uh, throw it out to you as a as a as a question, as a topic, as a thing that you might uh, that you did might you address. The things that you didn't want because. There was like the like the last time I did this, you were like, "Oh, I I was going to remove that, and I didn't." And then that's what I got. I believe I did. Okay. I believe I did. There are four things that I have blanked out here because they are similar, I believe, to questions that you had answered before. Oh, mm. no, meant to take that one out too. So hold on a second. Mm. Oh no! Quit quit mm. making noise. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Want to mm. get rid of that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It won't. If it comes up, I'll just go ahead and do the next one. Anyway, yes, I believe I have. Uh, sir, are you ready to uh, to spin the wheel of stuff? So I'm so ready to spin, Ken. Let's go. Well, I just found where the speaker is on this. It's great. I love this app. I love this app. That's that's your topic. There's a, there's an app that oh. you have found that you think people need to know about as well. You want people to know about this thing. This was one that was accidentally added by Adam Christensen because I was complaining about this app. I was saying, I love this app, but... And he was like, oh, I thought you were saying, I love this app was the topic. And he said, well, huh. by God, it is now. I love this app. Uh, Brian Chaffin, what app are you in love with right now? Um... <sighs> Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I don't go around looking for new apps that much, man. Doesn't have to be new. Well, I, I'm in Instagram a lot. It's mm-hmm. the one, I mean, it's owned by Facebook. I've got major problems with Facebook, but yeah. um, I, I thoroughly enjoy Instagram. What is it about Instagram that you thoroughly enjoy at this point? Hmm. I like getting that pictorial view into people's lives now what pictures can tell you yeah admittedly there is like this whole major section of instagram that is people posting nothing but selfies and that's not what i like instagram for i like instagram in, in in part for people who are showing me something interesting but also showing me how they see the world hmm um like uh, I, I've I've seen all kinds of great uh, sealing wax, uh, as in letter sealing wax yeah. um, uh, videos. I I, I love those. Uh, some calligraphy videos that I love. There's a guy uh, Dexter Rings uh, is a is a engraver out of England who does signet rings and um, hmm. you know family crest rings stuff. Amazing, amazing work. And he'll he'll show the ring, but then he'll also show a wax impression. That the that the ring uh, makes and it's just you know these um, amazing just really high quality work and then of course you have great photographers people who are just you know have this this terrific um, this terrific vision and 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 they can show you something that you would not otherwise have seen uh, and then with reels which is which is Instagram's uh, ripoff of TikTok. Uh, you end up seeing just a lot of really great creativity through right. a, a real explorer. There are two things I'll say really quickly. And yeah. I, I know that's like becoming the catchphrase for this show. Um, Facebook's sort of uh, grubby hands all over Instagram yeah. has made it less and less attractive to me every time I go. I, I get that. It's now Instagram now is a thing that I do about once a week. Because mm. it used to be a thing that I checked constantly because it was a good way to keep up with what your friends were doing and stuff like that. Uh, somehow I'm missing pictures, it seems. And also I'm getting pushed a lot of sponsored stuff and also add to your story. Like, well, no, I don't want to, you know, and it makes, sort of makes you. The question yeah, I was going to ask though was, have you, have you actually, have you started, uh, frequenting TikTok at all? And before you say anything, the reason I ask, I don't, but my special lady friend 
is like, I mean, she will find like all kinds of random like craft stuff. Like she was showing me a video of the whole section of TikTok uh, that makes its own thread. Huh. I don't awesome. mean threads. I mean thread, you know, yeah, and, you. and she's like all excited about that all of a sudden. Um, is that the kind of thing that you've gone to TikTok for or look for on TikTok or do you just not need another thing and, and you're happy with Instagram? I've never downloaded TikTok. I don't have a TikTok account. Oh. Um, the TikTok material that I end up seeing is usually stuff that's being posted to Instagram Reels. Ah, there you so go. Like it, it's yeah. created on TikTok and then, and then posted over on Reels. Okay, fair enough. Um, yeah, I, so when... Uh, the former president of the United States said, that's it, you know, TikTok's, you know, out of the app stores, all of them, like this weekend. Uh, I went ahead and downloaded it really quickly, and I spent 45 minutes watching TikTok and thought, I need to never go here again, because I spent 45 minutes watching TikTok. And, and it just seemed like a way I could, you know, spend the rest of my life. <laughs> are you ready to, are you ready sure. to spin again, sir? Yeah, spin. Ooh, Wow. How do you spend the last time it takes? What was the last concert you went to? What was the last concert I went to? Would be... Um, this was from the before times, right? Well, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, last concert... Oh, my goodness. What was the last show that I saw? It was uh, Brian Jones Town Massacre. Okay. I don't know Brian Jones Town Massacre. I know the name, but I don't know Brian Jones Town Massacre. Tell me about them. Punk, I'm guessing, with a name like no, that. No, uh, really? They were, uh, yeah. Anton Newcomb is the band leader. He's completely crazy and completely a genius. Um, it, he he was th that band, i.e., him, was instrumental in really starting the sort of uh, psychedelic revival movement um, in the mid '90s. Uh, they're still going strong today. Well, they're still going today. And uh, the band I was in, the Atomic Love Bombs, um, uh, counted Brian Jonestown Massacre as one of their um, uh, most important influences. Bands like the, 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 the Warlocks and the Black Angels and uh, Black Rebel Motorcycle Club, actually, the uh, one or two, I think it's just one of the people from Black Rebel Motorcycle Club was in the Brian Jonestown Massacre. So a lot of that uh, music, if any of those bands mean anything to you whatsoever, uh, a lot of that all came about starting with the Brian Jonestown Massacre. Uh, you said mid-90s was when they started? Yeah. Where does a band like that find a place today, or where did they find a place then? Because I'm assuming that was not something you were going to turn on the radio in here. San Francisco. Open your golden gates. What are you saying, though? I mean, that's where they, I mean, like... Is there a scene? Is there a, I mean, is it an online thing? I mean, where, where are you seeing that happen? Um, well, I mean, you know, it is 2021 now, so it, it has been a while. One of my, one of my absolutely favorite bands uh, coming out of San Francisco right now is the Spirals. And they're just right smack dab in the middle of that space. The Black Angels are from a, a, an, another one of my just, massively favorite bands are actually from Austin. Um, the, you know, I mean, it, it is, it is, um, live music in any given city is never quite what you might think if you're not there. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, San Francisco has lots of places to play, but it doesn't mean that, that, you know, it's particularly easy for bands to play them. And of course, you know, clubs, struggle in San Francisco in particular because of, of rents. Uh, but that's probably true for most places, um, uh, most markets. So I, I don't really know how to answer that question. San Francisco is the worst, though. I mean, it's not the worst, worst. I, I wasn't a, in New York, well, ever. I mean, I've been to New York, but I, mean, I didn't live in New York. But San Francisco, like, there was a fantastic bar down on Market called Lucky 13. It was always difficult to get into, and yet they closed because, you know, they couldn't afford the rent anymore. Yeah. Yeah, that, so. that's a that's a real that's a real issue. Do you know uh, uh, Roberto Baldwin? No. Okay. Should I? Good then. No, I don't know. I'm sorry. He he writes for I, I can't remember who he writes for now. He mostly does cars, but he also does tech, and he plays in a mm. bunch of bands around San Francisco as well. Mm. Um, I hope I got his last name right. If I didn't, maybe you do know him, and I'm just uh, messing it up. You ready to spin the wheel one last time, sir? Yep. Yes, I am. 
right after the, uh, right after the before times ended, or right after the after times started, uh, he, uh, he, so he does like these weird shows, Robbie does. I call him Robbie. I don't even know him well enough to call him Robbie, but it turns out a friend of mine who I had for years was in a band with him for years. And she's like, you know, Robbie? I was like, no, I don't. But, you know, we have this association online, whatever. Right cool after, story, bro. Right after, well, no, right after the lockdown started, though, because he does like all these really weird shows. Like he has a band that is dedicated to LCD sound system. Like they, mm. they do LCD sound system cover bands. But then sometimes he'll also do like, you know, 80s cover shows and then right after the lockdown started he went online and did a set in a dead mouse was it in a dead mouse helmet or was it it was in a um it was in a daft punk helmet and it was daft punk style music but covering something else i think you'd like him i think you should like uh seek him out sounds interesting and if i can never remember his real name uh, i i will let you know uh what that is animal vegetable or mineral uh, am I supposed to pick and you're going to give me something? Or? I, I do it. I don't even know. I, I, the wheel, the wheel, mineral. man, mineral. Tell me why. Uh, because I, I love gold. Okay. Like, like a gold member gold or like, what do I, you mean? I, I have in front of me here and actually was sitting on my desk. I've got a, uh, what is this? This is a 1907, uh, $5 gold piece. MS 63. Uh, meaning that it is essentially uncirculated. I think actually it is uncirculated. I, just, I love gold. So if you're going to ask me animal, vegetable, mineral, mineral, gold. <laughs> well, that is how the game is played. See, I, I like that question because it's so weird. It also tends to be one of the shortest answers that I ever get. But, I, uh, can, can I answer it one other way? Well, if you want to, sure. Do you want me to ask it again? No. Okay. Mineral, because when I was in the fourth grade, I had a t-shirt that said, numismatists have a lot of sense. C-E-N-T-S. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It really made me a lot of friends amongst my peers. <laughs> I would I would imagine it did, yeah. I, I do love, though, how uh, we have brought the whole thing back to, uh, to currency. Yeah, uh, fair enough. There That's... are definitely, like, comparisons to be made between gold and bitcoin so uh coming up next uh brian chaffin what's news to him it's crypto (laughs) we're back in two and two